Hello, all you crazy Peronis in YouTube land. Once again, I, Silver Quill, the man, the myth, the hippogriff, have hijacked the MBS show. Now, here comes the bride as we talk about wedding planning. The most easygoing and lackadaisical, but lackadaisical of events. Joining me today are several insane Peronis. First up, the guy who draws and tries to review movies, James Cork. I have a third friend, Deja V. Is it just me? Uh, I don't know. It's probably nothing. Are you drunk? Uh, what? No, no, I'm not dr- Where's my vodka? That's what they all say. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> well, okay. James is having a bit of an off day. And for a guy who's having an off century, here is Norman Sanso. I used to be engaged once. It was not fun. I, I'm intrigued, but shan't indulge further. I thought Would you were you gonna bride? say. <laughs> I thought it was gonna say I was engaged once, but then I took an arrow to the knee. <laughs> then he got engaged again. You're a Mormon. <laughs> oh my! Uh, I'm not gonna go. <laughs> and also with us is our newest reviewing member, Sapphire Heartsong. Hello, Sapphire. Silver loves me. He sent me bacon cheese that I am currently eating because it is amazing. These just <laughs> in ponies are carnivores. That's new. Plus. I only had so much cyanide. I mean, come on. Not even a pony can resist bacon. Uh, it's even better when you start. add the cheese. And cyanide. Yes, congratulations, everyone. You tuned in to listen to Sapphire Heart Song Eat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is... I'm almost done with my block. With your guac? My block well... of cheese, yes. Oh, I thought you had a blog. And you were eating a blog. <laughs> She's a I thought... blog of cheese. <laughs> I thought she was throwing guac into the mix, which would be delightful. But... That actually does sound delightful, but sadly it's winter, so no avocados. Ah, well. Oh. Uh, so anyway, you got to let's listen to Sapphire Eats. <laughs> Soon we're going to do a let's watch of Sapphire Eats. Sapphire okay. Eats. It's like that scene in Death Note, but way more intense. First I'll oh, make God. a chip, and then I'll eat it. <laughs> Oh, uh, God, I remember that. <laughs> Silver, what are we going to review today? Well, we won't be reviewing a psychopath who kills people. We'll just be talking about a psychopath who nearly kills someone. Uh This is My Little Pony Friends Forever, issue number 19, starring Rarity and the Cakes. But mostly Rarity, as she nearly kills someone after going psycho. Rarity, best pony. Uh, someone is going to be agreeing with me on this review for once. <laughs> I do like one line in this comic said by the cakes that makes it cool, but uh, let's carry on before we go. Well, yeah. uh, let let us first just a quick summarization. Rarity gets the bright idea to start in sort of a Walmart for uh, wedding supplies, a one-stop shop, and seeks to align herself with the cakes. But, of course, this is Rarity. And as is very common in her episode, she tends to go overboard on planning not really paying attention, and hijinks ensue. But first, let us give our initial impressions. Going inverted alphabetical order, and if Sapphire Heartsong has uh, fit, has completed her beginnation. I'm almost done, but I can I can put it down for a second. Put, She's 75% bacon now. Put the bacon down, Sapphire. Leave Sunset Shimmer's hair alone. But, but <laughs> bacon! Oh, no, I don't no, have a no, problem. No. You have a problem. What problem? Yeah. Okay, I'm good. Yeah, Sunset Shimmer is more like ketchup and mustard pony, but. Oh yeah. I go bacon. Okay, here. I'm good. Bacon here. <laughs> it's bacon. bacon. Okay. All right. So, what did you think of Z's comic overall? As much as I love Rarity, and as much as I love the designs of like the dresses and such, because you know how I am with art, I'm a total sucker. Yeah, it wasn't that good. It was a classic rarity formula. It was basically sued for success, like, rehash. It was, um, played as such, except instead of rarity doing this for her friend, she's doing this as a business aspect with people we don't really get to interact with, even though it's a Friends Forever comic. I love rarity, but it's all about her, darling. All about her! Okay. I'm going back to my bacon cheese. James, or, no, Norman. I don't know. Do your thing, whoever is next. That would be me, right? Inverted alphabetical order, so yes, Norman. Have at it. I, for one, 
almost forgot about this comic. Not that I forgot that it exists, but I forgot how it flowed. I had to reread it recently and it was not bad, but I had a deja vu feeling of this feels like made in Manhattan instead of that almost sad ending we got near the end. This was something a bit different where Rarity is not the hero, but someone else will guess. We'll soon find out who it is or uh, what was it suited for success or whatever Rarity episode there is. It's kind of a rehash of an old story being told, but I'll give up my reasons later in the end to say what I like about this book, because I like it. But next person, James? What to say that you guys haven't said already? I was uh, trying so hard a couple of uh, weeks ago when Norman said, well, we have to review another comic, James, and I'm like, which is it? And he's like, uh, oh, the Rarity and Mr. Cakes one. There was a Rarity and Mr. Cakes comic? What? Hang on a minute, let me look. Oh, hey, yeah, that's right, there it is. Oh my god, I completely forgot about this comic, and I did. Uh, exactly for what you said, this comic is doing so many things that so many other episodes have done. And I, I'm sorry to sound like a broken record, but this one also plays it way too safe. And they don't do many new things with the character of Rarity. Don't, don't add her a lot. This is again Rarity learning a lesson in humility. Or not. <laughs> Depends on how you read the ending of the comic. We have seen this done so many times that my brain completely filtered out and I'm like, this is so forgettable. And it disappeared. So I really didn't, didn't remember this comic at all. So my opinion of it is that that's that. It's very forgettable. That is, it leaves no impact on you. Uh, which sucks. I love Rarity as well. She's awesome and she gets completely wasted in this comic. And as for myself, uh, I've romanticized the cakes in my videos. I, I enjoy their presentation as a couple, as these quirky, fallible ponies who are, have never had a, the spotlight, but still make an impression. Uh, so I was excited when I found out that they got, would get to get star in a comic, except they're not really guest starring. They are set pieces to rarity story. They get to show their best at the end, but it, again... Most Friends Forevers tend to go drop down into the middle range of quality the minute you do that. When suddenly it's really one character carrying the comic and any others are just sort of there at the end. Well, sorry, but you're asking me to walk on a journey. I would like to spend time with our party equally as much as possible. I'm going all Starlight awesome. Glimmer here. Equality. <laughs> oh, God. Silver Quill has become conformist. And also... Forget, forget Big Mac, forget bulk biceps, forget shining armor. God, God forget shining armor. <laughs> Mr. Cake is manliest pony. That's right, cause he changes diapers with his mouth. <sighs> he doesn't That's have even, friggin' unicorn not even magic. Chuck he, does that. he doesn't have <laughs> unicorn magic to do that. He has his mouth. Poor, poor unfortunate soul. So yeah. sad, but true. James, you do know why Chuck Rodriguez doesn't do that, right? Uh, no. What because the diaper cleans itself up. You should know that. Uh, hey. <laughs> Norman, don't make it weird. <laughs> Alright, so let's dive into this. From here on out, folks, there be spoilers, ye be warned. And we start <laughs> with the cover, as it basically sums up this entire comic right with one image. It is funny that Pound Cake is absent. They make a point to have Pumpkin there on the floor looking adorable. With her second tier character eyes. Honestly, I'm thinking that Pumpkin was it? Yep. Yeah, Pumpkin, pumpkin is flying behind the logo. Oh, well, so, no, P Pound is the flyer. Oh, yeah, Pound. So I'm thinking Pound is flying behind the logo. It, it would be a good spot if you think about it. Like, without the logo there, it would be a good spot. Yeah. Oh, although, yeah. I, although, honestly, looking at this image, I think they're preparing the wedding for Sombra and Radiant Hope. Oh? Because, look at the list below Friends Forever. Gold Leaf, Chocolate Fountain, Crystal. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I can't really read. Oh, I, I somewhat see it, so Crystals. Ah. That, that will happen on the next comic. Okay. Uh, on, the, on the next comic arc. 
It's going to be a four-parter involving a wedding, and <laughs> then it's going to be Cadence and Shining Armor, the ones breaking into it. Aha! Uh, well, that fits well. Anyway. anyway, we start this story proper with Son of a Gun, a wedding. That's now three weddings in Equestria. Ah, ah, ah. And I get such a kick on the bride's <laughs> face. She's look, She's got this look that just says, thank God I don't have to prepare for this anymore. That's exactly how brides look at the end of weddings. It's like, thank God I don't have to go through this again. Perfect. Although, I'm looking at the um, third panel of this page, and there are human, um, what is it, cake toppers. Uh, no, that could be ponies. No, right? no, it looks completely human. Are they aware? Was Lyra right all along? Oh, the humanity! Or the ponanity! I don't know what the friggin' pony equivalent of humanity is! <laughs> oh! uh, okay. But same panel, Pinkie Pie looks awesome. <laughs> the equinity. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <clears throat> but basically, the groom is thanking the both Rarity and the Cakes for doing such a wonderful job on the dress, on the amazing uh, cake. It all looks wonderful. So, and... High props to Rarity and company for their own uh, outfits. Yes. Was, I can't say I really am big into pony dress up, but when they they've had some good costumes. Oh yeah, and Fluttershy's hair looks awesome. Oh my gosh, awesome. yes. Although um, Twilight definitely reminds me of a uh, best night ever. I would know mm-hmm. because I cosplayed as that once. It's uh, it, oh, it, it is yeah, I did. Is it is the same hairstyle that she had in the Make New Friends but Keep Discord episode? Oh, I thought... Or, or very, or very well, similar. A little similar. It definitely has that updo look. I'm the girl in the review, so I mostly like to comment on how pretty things look. <laughs> no problem. Aw, you've taken uh. my place. <laughs> I don't like to talk about the pretty ponies. <laughs> pretty, pretty unicorn fall. <laughs> uh, okay. Now we're, now we're going to have to okay. get James a bunch of hagen <laughs> ah! <laughs> I want cookie dough, Ben and Jerry's. I don't like that. We'll get you some Ben and Jerry's shreddy balls. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> I can take uh, that. Too. That's an actual flavor. I'm not being crass. It's I'm quoting. What? What the people call you? Shreddy balls. Shreddy balls. What's in what? it? Oh, uh, let's see here. It's rum. Uh, I believe it's little rum balls in vanilla. I believe, with some oh God, light, light, light salt. Yet. We found the manliest ice cream. Can we sure. can we just keep the rest of the review talking about this new flavor? <laughs> that I never okay. heard of? Believe me, dude, okay. you'll want to put some shreddy balls in your mouth before too long. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, but speaking of poor word choice, Twilight makes this mistake of saying it's almost as if you were in business together. And that gets Rarity thinking. Thinking without really asking anyone, she decides to align with the cakes for a one-stop shop on bridal gowns and pastries, which is not even half of the wedding. But they're treated as the one-stop shop. Good lord. Oh, yeah. And it turns out Spike is there. And while we're complimenting all the dresses, he's wearing a bow tie and nothing else. Oh, my God, is he a streaker? He couldn't mm-hmm. get a tuxedo like back in what was it? Um, Ghostbusters. <laughs> I mean, I know it the... wasn't real, but it was still Spike. a tux. Or even in Best Night Ever, he had tux. Yep. Spike could start on the next sequel of Magic Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Magic oh, Spike oh. XXXL. <laughs> Magic Mike. Oh my God, that movie. <laughs> this is what every woman thinks when they watch Magic Mike. The Plot is terrible, but we just want, we're just there to see all the guys drip. So every time oh anything else, like, besides that is on screen, we yell at our screens, strip, damn it! <laughs> and this is from a woman. Uh, well, it, uh, hey, it, what, what, what do you mean? Do you mean that guy's kind of like that too? Shut up, Norman. Depends, but this is word for word, like what Sapphire says, like, She's a lady, and she says that. Like, <laughs> meanwhile, every I, like I, can a, lady, I can have a man crush. But I like seeing my guys trip. Pretty much. Meanwhile, every guy whose girlfriend or wife goes to see that movie just thinks, oh, "I need to go to the gym." 
<laughs> anyway, so basically, one other thing. I don't understand this. Why does Heather Breckel always give Spike a green tongue? Yeah, that bothered me. Like, I, it's not the first time, but I think it's a reoccurring thing that I think it's listed under the whole color scheme but thing. Spike you know, Spike doesn't have a green tongue in the show. He has the same mouth color as the rest of the ponies. He probably had too many jawbreakers. But, but it doesn't. It doesn't really. It, uh, it doesn't really clash, at least to me. I mean, she keeps it with the greens and the purples, but it's just distracting. He had too many sour apple jobbers. That's it. But basically, having shot Spike down again, Rarity <laughs> goes to see the cakes, and despite their hesitations, she basically cajoles them into it. They get one page of resistance, and well, when Rarity makes that face, the weepy eyes. You cannot resist. James, Sapphire, look at that teary-eyed rarity and tell her no. It's... Right. No. I, I can't. I am staring at it. I really am. No. You're, st- you're staring at no. it, but you're not seeing it. I you're am staring. I'm looking at it. I'm you're staring deeply seeing. into the eyes. No. You're not seeing it. I can't oh, say no. I can't do it. I can't do it, Rarity. I can't say no. Funny. I can't say I can't. no. <laughs> I can't say no. I can't say no. Search your and plus, I, say no. I actually learned all my tricks with my collaborators, like, with those weepy eyes from Rarity. That's how I got Tyandaga to be my official evidence cleaner. Oops, did I say that what? out loud? No. <laughs> that's how you convince people. That's how you get anybody, that's how you get anyone to do whatever you want. And I know Silver is a sucker for it. No wonder he was away at Barbados. Barbados Slim? No, Tayendaga. He was away. Hmm. He was cleaning up after all of the dead bodies of the OCs that were trying to impersonate me. Hmm. She's still going after that cover girl from the uh, issue 18. Yes. Now in Canterlot, which I appreciate that they added a Canterlot uh, word bubble, but they also did a good job replicating the architecture. At least they know it's not in Ponyville. Here's where we start to hit... Hoity toity land. Yep, suited for success, dos point oh. Except that now it's not hoity toity, it's Touring Win, who's the most influential fashion pony. Or rather, like editor. all the other influential fashion ponies. And I, ha- and I have to ask, is she based on any other celebrity in the fashion circuit? I wouldn't doubt it. She looks like a purple um unicorn... Without, like, the sunglasses um, photo finish, you can actually yeah. see her eyes. I know I know that Hoity is based on a, on, on a, a rather big celebrity on the fashion world, and that f- a photo finish is based on Anna Wintour, was it? Mm-hmm, yeah. Probably. So, yeah, I wonder if she's based on someone else. Probably and probably not. It's just one of those characters who... Probably seem one like one of those fashionistas. If I'm wrong, or if anybody knows, they'll write down in the comments. So please do if you do. Tell know. us how wrong we are. Yeah, or if you know, do tell us who is this. Do I tell. don't know. I really don't. I wish I knew, but I don't like modern <laughs> mainstream media when it comes to like fashion and celebrities. I'll I'll just stick with my ponies and anime and. My occasional Pokemon game. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. But, so, but yes, this is at least the seventh high class, uh, fashion pony Rarity has wanted to impress. It's kind of yes. her thing. And so, Touring Wind and her assistant, Bright Bridal! <laughs> will be coming to Ponyville to check things out. And so Rarity wants to lay lay on the class. So, back in Ponyville, it's kind of a bad thing that Applejack recommended a cousin. Oh, boy. Mm. Ginger Gold and Apple Crisp. They're get, planning on getting married. I don't know which one of them is actually uh, related to Applejack, because, you know, Apple family's pretty extensive. Oh. Also, they're Southern, so they might be both related. <laughs> <laughs> no. Silver. 
Bad, bad, Hippogriff. You are it not sucks. eating your ham tonight. It's okay. I'll bad. just take. I'll just take your bacon. <laughs> no, you leave my bacon cheese alone. Okay, fine. I can't resist you. You can that have some sound bacon. Like the name of a pony, bacon cheese. <laughs> Although yeah, 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 yeah. those these couples were drawn very, very cutely. I just want to hug them. They look so cute together. I want yeah. to. Yeah, look at them cuddle. I know! I can't help it but feel the love. Cue the Elton John. Kind of instantly care for these characters, even though they haven't said a single line. That's awesome. I'm a commotion with Cadence and Shining Armor, but the scene where they were... Okay, the fake Cadence and Shining Armor shared a little affectionate nuzzle. Yeah, little things. Little things make you root for them. I know. Then you, then you find out that wasn't his true love. It's like, okay, well, there you go. She was faking little, little faker thing and <laughs> succubus bug pony thing. I love you, but I hate you too. So the wedding's in short order, but, but Rarity is all for it as long as it's elegant and chic. Meanwhile, uh, Apple Chris, she just wants a simple country-esque wedding. Mm-hmm. Although and green on your wedding dress, really, hun? Well, hey, actually, props to her for defying convention. Well, good point, mm-hmm. but still. Eh. Although, on Rarity's end, I do not appreciate the hairstyle, especially with that swan. Like, why would you want a dead bird in your hair? Be- because if you if you go over the top, you might as well put a swan on it. Why do you- yes, fanciness. I- uh, you know what, you though? It's kind of weird because that hairdo ain't gonna fly, so. <laughs> <laughs> but what makes you think oh, the bird geez. is dead? What if Fluttershy just said- I want to said, be overdramatic. Let me have my moment here, Silver. I'm, I'm, envisioning, me... I'm envisioning Fluttershy saying, now, if you could just hold that pose for the next hour or so, and the swan's <laughs> just like- Perhaps Rarity was just winging it with the design. <laughs> oh my god, they crucified a swan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway. Well, Rarity basically starts saying, we're gonna go full on elaborate, a seven tier masterpiece cake with a chocolate waterfall. And it's up to the cakes to fi- figure all this out. Rarity, of course, is not offering any, uh, teamwork in this. She's basically dictating terms, so she's, so she is in essence cut the cakes out of their partnership. Although, with all the expenses coming along, it makes you wonder how things will, you know, like, work out for the couple that are paying for this wedding. They didn't actually want this, but they're paying for it anyway. <laughs> Equestrian money is funny, daddy money. And I'm sure that Rarity's paying for this. Okay. Well, in that headcanon, I would accept it. But if she were making them pay for it, I would strangle the hell out of her. Okay, go ahead, Silver. <laughs> I've neglected yeah. to mention that Spike's here too, getting, uh, abused as always. It's the classic joke, Spike carries a mountain of luggage, gets crushed, falls over. We laugh at his pain, but not really. I want to hug him instead. Poor thing. Anywho, so we get a day, uh, we get a montage. You need a montage. Montage! Of rarity yeah, basically we're... being a terror. So let's just cut to the chase. Rarity Neela kills a pony. Yep. Yeah. Yep. True yeah. That. Yeah. yeah. Now, now you know why the Apple family barely eats yeah. strawberries. This is specific. Like, Applejack, I, I think Applejack, yeah, I think Applejack or Go, Ginger Gold, those two said that she's allergic to strawberries the whole time. And Rarity's just mm, ignoring what the clients want. Which is also a common trait of rarity. She often goes, her own creativity overwhelms her, and she forgets what the customer wants. That usually happens when you are given way too much control. (laughs) I don't think this is control rather than ambition. We can save this near the end. I can kind of sympathize with rarity, because when it comes to certain projects, if I am not... If I am not given direction, I overload my work with with elements to the point that well, they, they end up suffocating the actual picture. I think that might be 
a hindrance on, on Rarity's side. It's like when she's given way too much control of something, or when she takes too much control of something, things get out of it. At the same time, she nearly killed a pony, man. And so, so I'm not for justifying her. I'm, for eating a strawberry in that one episode. <laughs> I'm not justifying her. I'm, I'm doing the, the complete opposite. I'm like, good grief, Rarity. You should control yourself some more. I have to say this because Rarity here has been given orders on what the client wants. And I have to say this, that this is not the first time that she did this. Remember in Made in Manhattan where she just added more bling to the dress. Technically, it's much nicer, but it's not what the client wants. But this is what the client wants. We want a simple wedding where the cake is this uh, this way and we want the topping to be us carrying a carriage looking in Generation 3 style. I think you're um thinking of Camerawatt Boutique because I don't remember that type of scene in Rarity Takes Manhattan. I think of the moment between Ghost Pepper and Rarity, you know, the rude pony with the red hair. And the chili pepper cutie mark. You're yeah. talking. You're talking about the pony who said these are not the gems that I ordered. This is not what I ordered. Yeah, that one. That was, was such a glorious moment. I think mostly of the uh, of the puppeteer pony from Inspiration Manifestation. Oh God, that mm, guy. completely unusable. Yep. But he was right. He was. He was he, right, he was... but at the same time, he was freaking rude, and I hated it. I have to say this. Why did he went to Rarity for carpentry work? Who knows? Um, who knows? Maybe, no, no, you know what? Perhaps he didn't go to her. She just offered the same way that she's offering, offering her services for this story here. Usually it's Rarity the one that goes to others. She's not the one that gets approached. She was the one to yeah. offer the, her friend's dresses. She was the one who offered to build the the, the carriage. I, I think I, I recall that she was the one who said, no, I offer my 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 uh, expertise to build this carriage. And she's now doing this with the wedding. I think it's in her nature. Remember that she's, you know, generous, 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 generous. And sometimes that ends up biting her on the flank. When it comes to my personal experience with, like, commissions and whatnot, when I have personal, like, when I've been given, like, absolute freedom... I still always check in with the customer who is paying for the commission just so that they make sure they get exactly what they want. Because yeah, I want... I would oh, personally feel ashamed of myself if it wasn't what they wanted. Besides, you spend too much time working on something to have uh, the client see it and go, oh, that's not exactly what I wanted to see. And then exactly. all, your, all your work out the window and you're like, oh my God, why did I do that? I'm such a moron. That's why I always check in with the customer. Yeah, yeah keep, in the, keep in the loop with the client. Don't do what Rarity is doing in this comic. Anywho, so this page also confirms Pony Souls exist as one is currently leaving Ginger Cult. <laughs> I know. Oh yeah, she pretty much killed her. <laughs> So there you go, you two. Your favorite pony killed someone. No! Good for you. I'd just like to point out that Fluttershy never killed anyone. Oh, <laughs> Well, no, she has killed thousands and thousands of people with her cuteness. Including Silver at one point. But I was, didn't die from cuteness. That was Rarity and Sweetie Belle. It was Belle. Rarity and Sweetie Belle, yeah. And for whom the Sweetie Belle toils. So, oh, so I... that's two people Rarity's killed. Way to go, Rarity. <laughs> Meanwhile, the cakes are... Really looking at an expensive cleaning bill for their home. Oh, yeah. And poor Rarity is just crying in agony. It's like... (laughs) And Touring Wind has has a right to be... ah! Like, about ready to have a heart attack. This is not classy enough. And so, this is where the cakes get to shine. In that odd cheeriness. I mean, Mrs. Cake always does... This sort of, oh, dearie, I'm so sugary sweet, even when she's being <laughs> busy deadpan. She's like from the, Minnesota? Oh, don't you know? You know, if we didn't already have a Marge Gunnison pony, I'd make that comparison. Aww. Oh, yeah. But basically, she just strolls through a cascading chocolate waterfall, delivers a cure unto a, unto a dying pony. Rarity is just in tears. She's a drama queen. I, she, well... <laughs> She has been a terrible pony through this, so at least she's owning up to it. Yeah, she is. At least she admits it. Thank goodness that <laughs> pu- pumpkin is allergic to strawberries, so they uh 
they have the cure on hand. Yep, and I do like the next page. Like, everything that they're explaining, like the cake's telling Rarity this and that, this and that, and Rarity's lying. Honestly, I don't know how you two can be so calm. We have twins! Yes! <laughs> Just so glorious. It's like... That is a very, that is a very good point. <laughs> That was like, that was one of the best lines. Like when Norman, you gave me the link to the website, and I saw that. It's like, oh my god, that's the best thing ever. It's like, yeah, oh my god, ugh. Yeah, like Rarity face evil on a weekly basis, or by monthly or yearly basis. The cake has twins. That's nothing compared to twins. Oh, god. So mm-hmm. that that means that means that the foil to destroy all the creatures in the quest lies within the cake twins. Hey, don't forget they have to deal with Pinkie Pie. Oh yeah. Oh, twins and Pinkie. These these two should be god modded. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yet there is not enough appreciation. Twins in a horn right now. Yet there is not enough appreciation for these guys, which is such a shame. Oh, that's right. Well, that you can't you can't sell being a baker parent. You gotta be a princess. Well, what about Into the Woods? You can... I'm still waiting for my Mrs. Cake, mi- mi- Mrs. Cake Easy Bake Oven. Do <laughs> that, husband. Wow. Actually, why haven't they done that? I, because, I wonder well, why Easy they haven't. Easy Bake has been, like, hasn't that thing been cancelled, like, due to... No, they re-updated. Oh. They updated the toy. We still... We we had the 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 uh sugar cube corner set with a uh, chubby looking Mrs. Cake brushable. We had like the Mr. Mrs. and Mr. Cake uh, blind box and all that, but we haven't had anything like that. They should do that. But here's the real question. Here's the real question: Is the Easy Bake Oven a product of Hasbro? The, they yeah. don't need to be. Is is Play Doh a product of Hasbro? No, like play doh. No, can no, eat play, those things. play doh is not a product of Hasbro, or 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 is it? It's not okay. So play doh is not a product of Hasbro, but they have play doh, My Little Pony toys. Really? Yeah, they, yeah do? they do. They have a Rainbow Dash one where you can put the, the you can put the play doh on the brain of Rainbow Dash and then squish it, and the hair comes out. It's so disturbing. Okay, now uh, now I need to double check. Yeah, but no, if they have that, they should totally do a Mrs. K Gizzy Bake Oven. I mean, come on, it's 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 it's, it's logical. Oh yeah, Plato's Hasbro's. Sorry. Well, oh, Plato's Hasbro. Okay, never mind. So we're not going to get paid for this consultation, are we? No. Yeah. no. Uh, oh well. No. Well, in the meantime, Spike's not getting paid to be a terrorist, but here he is. While well, the cakes go to uh, convince Touring Wind to stick around and give Rarity another shot, which again, the the fashion industry in Equestria is actually very forgiving. Uh, Rarity's like dropped the ball three times with three separate ponies, and they still come back for round two. Mm. That's something. Mm-hmm. That's something else. Wait, wait. <clears throat> she dropped the ball with Hoitoiti, These guys, and what was the third one? Oh, who was in charge of the uh, Rarity takes Manhattan? Uh, Primrose Hemline. Prim oh, Hemline, yeah. that that yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. I yeah, think, yeah. Okay. I don't know why I was thinking Primrose. I think I was thinking of the color. I don't know. But Spike, meanwhile, is blocking all trains everywhere for the sake of rarity, which is a demonstration of his love and his sociopathic tendencies. <laughs> <laughs> in in the meantime, the guy in charge of the of the engine, he's like, oh, there is a dragon on the rails. Ah, oh, don't worry. Just go faster. We'll get over it soon. <laughs> he even tied himself. I think Spike might have a little bit of... That's not a word. With that picture that I'm currently staring at. <laughs> Like, why do you need to tie yourself down to... Actually, you're not even tied down to the railroad track. Yeah, they could technically just push him off. Yeah! <laughs> I think Spike has a bit of a... That's not a word! In that case. You're not. Oh, yes. So, and Rarity has redeemed herself because she makes a compromise dress. It is not the green that... uh Crisper apple or whatever, uh, envision. Golden crisp. Ginger. That pony envision. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not the swan travesty. It's not the swan dive that, that rarity envisioned. And she loves it! She loves it. Once again, I, again, they're very forgiving, these fashion ponies. The dress works because the general idea for what made her come to Ponyville was the blend between dress and cake. It's a business deal that 
is really awesome. But when she went there to witness the cake, it was terrible. The dress site, well, if Rarity had her chance, it would have been a train wreck. But thankfully, all turns out well in the end. Still, they're going to be famous in uh, modern magazine. Rarity is still on the idea of working together. And the cakes give the obligatory sigh. <laughs> oh, except, yes, sigh. except that the wording really turns them Spanish. See, si, goo. <laughs> <laughs> so Norman. there's Norman. What? Norman. what yes? uh, James, what is goo in Spanish? Ah, oh. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, it it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> yes, good. It doesn't yes, mean good. anything. I don't know. Oh, oh, if you change the pronunciation, it sounds like you're casting a spell. Seagull. <laughs> or are you speaking Klingon? <laughs> Increase the phlegm from our Klingon. Seagull. I, 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 I am certain they wanted to go for something. Oh, God, it's over I'm tripping. mixed between Spanish and French, but I don't know if, if, if it even flies. Oh, wow. You know that the whole Klingon thing is, well, that, who's that guy? Who's that guy? I forgot him. Oh, Worf? Uh, Worf. Yeah, Worf. He's just a strange Klingon. Literally, he's strange. Not even the Klingons like him. Yeah, he's the odd, odd duckling. Yeah. The very <laughs> but, angry... Oh, duckling that can hit you. Or... When it comes to anything in the same, my praises for uh, Brenda Hickey's hard work because every comic that she does, it's just so, uh, so visually popping. Like to to me, the best comic that she has drawn is the Pinkie Pie Twilight Sparkle, my uh, friends mm. forever. That was that one was amazing. But I think this one, the the, le- the lettering might have been a bit weird because I. I I don't, I, I'm pretty sure that for the normal lettering, like Neil attack uh, takes care of the normal lettering, but for the ones that like are more like, uh, onomatopoeic or more like, uh, cartoony esque, I think that's, uh, that's Brenda Hickey's, uh, work. I, I would have put that sigh in a different way. Not so this, uh, confusing. I don't think that's an onomatopoeia because that could be on the, Letterer. It doesn't work. It doesn't have the same font as the rest of the comic does, uh, as the rest of the other speech bubbles do. So, uh, but it, 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 it is weird. Whoever was in charge of it, they would have put it in a different way. Because it's not Comic Sans, it's gonna have Neil a Uetake. bad time. No, but that's what I mean. Is that Neil Uetake is the is takes care of the of the letter. He's, he always does a fantastic job. I think that whenever it's out of the the normal font. That's uh, in charge of the, of the no, artist himself. I've I've seen raw files or the raws for the comic strips, and the bubble, the speech bubble, and the lettering don't come in by the artist or colorist. Those are done by the letterist or what was it? What did call letterist? Was it the lettering? The letterist guy? Yeah, the yeah, the letterist. Like it's done all by him. If it's not onomatopoeia, like a big wall of, like, kaboom! It's not him. Hmm. Josh Gortry's here? No. Aww. Letters by Neil Yutaki? Yeah. I'm probably mispronouncing that, I apologize, but... Neil, you you don't... Just keep the sea goose to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. All the others are, like, we're fabulous, we have twins. Those work. That last one, like, yeah. Drop the ball last minute? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All, the, all right. But we have basically come to the end. All is well. Rarity is happy and still ambitious. The cakes, it's funny for all the mess they've been through, they shine. And now it is time for our final thoughts. So, I, once again, inverted alphabetical order. Sapphire Heart Song. Have at it. With this comic, it's a classic rarity trope. Rarity gets into this situation involving a business. Um, she meets a celebrity after just starting the business. She then has a deadline in order to impress that celebrity. It goes into a frizz to the point where she almost kills Pony, but really she doesn't. Everything is resolved, and then the end rarity somehow gets her dreams worked out for her. It's a classic trope. I honestly wish I could have seen the cakes more, because we don't 
see the cakes that often. It would be nice to see that it's... I mean, I haven't really paid attention to the cakes much, but knowing how they work as characters, I'd like to see more of them. Like, see more interactions. I mean... <clears throat> Like, for example, with Celestia and the cakes, that was one of the better moments of season one for me. It was fun to watch. But when you push them off to the side, like the second tier characters that they are, it's a little disappointing, especially since this is a Friends Forever comic where everybody gets the spotlight, like, equally. Unless it's the last issue where it was mostly Flare Shy and Rainbow Dash being Rainbow Dash. It was okay. I wanted to see more of the cakes, but that's pretty much my general opinion. I did like the art. I enjoyed the fun little quirks of this comic, like Spike, even though he was being tortured, like the little season four punching bag he is. Overall, uh, okay, it's it's a comic. I'll probably just forget about it and then find some pleasant read into it later on in life. Norman? Well, as for me, I like this comic. This comic is fun, interesting, cute at some points, but it's not memorable. I don't know what keeps it not memorable. Like, I totally forgot most of the scenes, most of the art. Like, the twins, I forgot all about that until I reread it. Probably I'm going to not forget it in a while, but still, I kind of forgot most of the things. And I do like how... The story is told here. It's supposed to be a Friends Forever with the rarity and the cakes. But for the few first half of the story, we're stuck with rarity for most parts. Like, I think this is just a setup for the cakes. If you take a look-see, it's setting up for the cakes to shine. Because we have all the rarity shenanigans. Like, she's trying to set up the scenario. And... She's setting up how the cakes are going to, well, not make that cake look good. Once we get to the point where we show that star pony who's there, like we show them that everything that Rarity is doing is not working to the cake. And until the cake's got control of everything, we see everything shine because the cake knows what they're doing in terms of, okay, this is how we do cakes. Uh... Don't fret and rarities on the dress side. She knows what to do. Once she listens to what the clients want, everything goes well. The business plan sounds good, but the execution with how rarity wants it to be is totally bad. For me, the episode was sort of like made in Manhattan. Then again, I also had to look it up just so I could remember the episode's title name as a forgettableness. It was like that for me. And the comic is not bad. It's not memorable. That's what I can say. What about you, Silva? Well, oh, we must have skipped James. James. Oh, sorry. We don't need a repeat so of... I, I see that I am as forgettable as the comic itself. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Sorry about that. Like, you just... yerk. Okay. <laughs> you mini head. You My... yerk? Too? yerk? My... What's a yerk? <sighs> I no, I really want to know. Too. What is a yerk? Uh, it, I don't it's know. when you're unpleasant for a full year. A year <laughs> and jerk. A yerk. A yerk. Oh, and we just started 2016, so you're in for the long haul. <laughs> I love you too, Silver. Uh, you're just, you're, you're just, your gonna, you're just gonna be yerking me around. <laughs> Would you like it in more ways than one? Oh my. Oh, wow. James, wow. go, 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 go. <laughs> James. I, want keep, I want to keep hearing this. I want to keep hearing this. Oh, oh James likes to listen. <laughs> uh. Oh, yes, hey, because wait. I'm totally going to do a guy that's that I'm half his age for or something. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 carry on. <laughs> carry on, carry on. <laughs> Uh, she's she's yeah. calling me old again. <laughs> she's nice. Uh, it's yeah. fine if you don't uh, look. I'm that's, not it, if you old. don't say it is not illegal. Older than I. If you don't say it is not illegal, don't worry. You're fine. Oh. Uh, Next thing you anyway. know, Silver is going to change his name to Silver Fox. <laughs> <laughs> Silver Wolf. 
Just yep. No control at all. And, and now the references are getting away from me. This is an odd feeling. This is a uh, Johnny Carson reference. How does the uh, wolf go? <laughs> okay. Uh, Johnny. James, anyway, not. Jamesy. Yeah, ooh, nobody has called me Jamesy in forever. That, it feels, it makes me giddy. Ah, Jamesy. Oh great, now, now uh, the shipping shifts. <laughs> <laughs> um, oof, uh, this comic is really forgettable. Like I said, I read it, forgot I even read it, then forgot it even existed, then, wow, this comic. Oh my god, yeah, I buried deep beneath piles and piles of much better material. Uh, the the art of Brenda Hickey deserves a much better script than this, um, because even in the most uh, even in the most like uh, structure based uh, shoestring kind of stories like uh, the, the the friends forever with Twilight and Pinkie Pie, it's just it's just rehab. Pinkie going through rehab. That's it. But it it's so memorable the way that it's that it's uh, drawn. Or Applejack and Major Mare. It's like, that wasn't all that spectacular, but the segment with Applejack trying to fight through bureaucracy was just glorious. Especially because of how true it was. This one, not even the art of Brenda Hickey can save this one. I mean, I, I don't hate it, I don't think it's a bad comic, but it's so un, uneventful, uh, unimpactful, unforgettable that it's kind of like even worse. Because I mean, some bad comics kind of like, they, they are bad, but at least you remember them. But this one, uh, we could have skipped right into the next, the next one, the Discord and Luna one. That one is gonna be fun when we get to it. Oh yeah, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Discord and so, yeah. Luna, huh? Oh boy. My thoughts: mm-hmm. forgettable. Could have, could have been better. Uh five out of ten. See me after class. I'm gonna turn that, in, turn, turn that into a shtick. And uh, Silver, what do you think of the of the comic? Well, I I did enjoy it. It is very much hitting the same notes for me as suited for success. But I got to see the cakes be awesome. And Mrs. Cake wins the comic with this line. Gee, Rarity, I don't know if you've noticed this about yourself, but you don't like taking no for an answer. That is so Rarity. And basically, so I'm very happy to see the cakes have a moment in the spotlight, but it comes at the end of the comic after they've been victim of Rarity's whims. Now, last podcast, we talked about how Fluttershy... A lot of her stories feature the same conflict, that she is hindered by her shyness no matter what the challenge before her. Yeah. I'd say this comic highlights that Rarity can often suffer the same thing. Yeah, Her yeah. ambition, her emotional breakdowns are a recurring theme. But in this podcast, we have two very artistic individuals who identify very much with Rarity. And I think that's often a determining factor. If you identify with the character, even if they have recurring themes, uh, you, you say, yeah, that I, that's totally how I would feel in that situation. Oh, if yeah. you're, if you feel something of a disconnect, then it becomes more tedious. And I'm willing to bet a lot of people who dislike rarity don't connect with her on the artistic expression or the stress level expressions. You know, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something regarding that. Even on the artistic relatability kind of thing, I do, I'm starting to get tired of Rarity always going through the same storyline. Like, when they do something new with Rarity, like, uh, what was the name of the episode with Trenderhoof? Simple Ways. With mm. Simple Ways, that was not just Rarity with her, oh, I want Senpai to notice me, ah, it's, uh, it's, Rarity kind of like destroying her identity to try something else. Like that that's not what Rarity is used to do. That was fun. Or Rarity investigates. That's not Rarity following her artistic pursuits or anything. That's Rarity as a private detective. That was fun. So like well, I, I like I, I like when they go outside of those boundaries. That's cool. But I too am starting to get tired of the Oh, Rarity is a un- misunderstood artist and all that. That's why with the Canterlot Boutique episode, I was kind of like, I was in glee when she gets shafted by that other pony. It's like, because she changed the crystals on the dress. I'm like, yeah, that's what you get for not following the commissioner's orders. <laughs> I felt bad for Rarity, but at the same time, I was able to call her out on her bull yak. <laughs> I'm still going to use that until that becomes a thing. Make it a meme, people. Uh, I, I, it's, a very, it's a very southern kind of sounding word. I like that. 
bold yeah. yeah. Well, that's because I'm from Ohio. While I'm not Southern, I'm still in a country fail. And then I turned into a racist Applejack. <laughs> that's not a word. Uh, I said get... racist. Uh, but we get what you mean. I... Uh, well, anyway. So, anyway. Norman, what are we going to do for our next podcast? The next podcast... You guys have the option to take the blue pill or the red pill. Ooh. I'm blue, so I'm orange? biased. Can I take the orange pill? <laughs> well, if you decide to take the orange pill... I'll take the purple then... pill. <laughs> and the purple pill. Wait, there is a purple anyway, pill? You... Screw that. I want to get the purple pill. I don't like the orange all the time. Just, I like oranges, but I like the purple color more. Oh yes, anyway, Royal. Next week we're gonna review IDW issue number twenty of My Little Pony Friends Forever, featuring Discord and Luna. Ah, fan favorites. Oh yes. God, hide this me, is, hide me, somebody. This is nuts. This is nuts. Luna and Discord P. Sullivan. With also okay. also mm-hmm. with also with the same P. art uh, from Brenda Hickey. Now that is a more memorable comic. Yep. Yep. Uh, back to back. Back to back. So until then, we must, we shall bid you all adieu. Mm-hmm. So I want to thank everybody for coming along and join us on this merry-go-round of rarities and sanity. No wonder she has a care herself. So for the MBS show, I am Silver Quill, the man, the myth, the hippogriff. I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been a Spanish person, not so long as I first thought. And I'm a Pegasus with oversized bird wings who still wants her bacon cheese. Cannibal, cannibal. And we'll, I'm we'll not see- cannibal. That's pig meat. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Adios. See ya. Have a good one, everybody. Bye bye. Guys, I forgot what we just did. What were we talking about again? I don't know.